Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to draw what is called a box plot. And it pretty much wraps up everything which we've looked at so far in terms of spreads and measures of central tendency. So we use our lower fence and our upper fence from outliers, we use our median from our median, and we use our, our upper quartile, our Q3, and our lower quartile, Q1, from our IQ up. So what I've got here is I went bowling the other day with 12 of my friends and we went to a temp in bowling alley and we all bowled pretty averagely. Some of us got 6 strikes but this one guy Homer, he bowled 12 strikes and he dominated. So he bowled a perfect game and this here is Homer's perfect game. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to take this data and we're going to put it into a box plot. So the first thing we need to do when drawing a box plot is we do our median. So with our median Remember that uh, to calculate our median, we take our number of observations. So here I know I've got 13. We add 1 and we times it by the quartile we're after. So our second quartile over our fourth. So this is our second quartile over our, just our denominator, which is quartiles. So we times it by 0.5 and we'll find that our median is at this observation. So if we do 13 plus 1 divided by 2, our median will be at this observation. So our median will be at the seventh observation. So we go through our data, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our median is going to be here, this seventh observation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I can take it as 4. So our median will be 4, and it equals 4 because my data is already in order. So this data is ordered. If it wasn't ordered, we would have to order our data. But I've ordered it for us already to save some time. The next thing we need is our third quartile. So if you have a look at the IQR, our third quartile, we do the same thing. So we take our number of observations, we add 1, we times it by our desired quartile. So we want the third quartile over just the number which means quarter, which is 4. So we take this, so we get 13 plus 1 divided by 4 times 3. So we'll find that our third quartile is at this observation. So this is going to be at the 10.5th observation. So in order to calculate that, we go to our data. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is our 10th observation, but we're after the 10.5th, so if you look at the video on IQR, it's just a simple averaging process. This is our 10th, this is our 11th. All we do is we take the average of the two. So to take the average, we take our five, we add six, we divide it by two. Our upper quartile will be 5.5. .5. So that's our upper quartile. The next thing we want is we want our um, lower quartile. So our lower quartile, it's the same process. We take our number of observations, which is 13. As I've got 13 observations, we add 1 to it. We times it by the quartile which we want. So we just want the first quartile. And the number for quartile is 4. So first quartile, number for quartile is 4. So we get 14, we end up with 14 divided by 4. So our lower quartile is just going to be at the 2.5th observation. So, oops, sorry, that would be the 3.5th observation. So it's going to be at the 3.5th observation. And all we do is we go through, we count through our data, 1, 2, 3. So this is our third. So that's our third. And this is our fourth. So to find the 3.5th, it's just a simple averaging process of the 2. So we take our 2, we add 3 to it, and we divide it by 2. So our Q1 is going to be 2.5. Then the next thing we need to work out is what's this called IQR. So our IQR is just equal to our third quartile minus our first quartile. So our third quartile was equal to 5.5. .5. So we've got that here. And our first quartile was equal to 2.5. So our IQR is going to be 5.5 minus 2.5, which is equal to 3. And the reason we need that is we need that for our upper fence. 
So if we remember from our outliers video, which you can check out online, our upper fence is a proxy, or it's what we use as a rule of thumb to tell us where our data starts becoming outliers. So the way we calculated this upper fence was we took our third quartile, our Q3, and we added to that this what we called 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range. So that was how we worked out our upper fence. So if we just do that now, our upper fence is going to be equal to this third quartile, or 5.5, .5, and we'll add to it this 1.5 times to buy our IQR and our IQR was 3. So if we work this out, we'll get our upper fence is equal to 5.5, which is our Q3, plus 1.5 times 3, which is 4.5. So our upper fence is equal to 10. And basically that says that any number above 10 would be classed as an outlier. And this is going to be important for later on. So for our lower fence, we do the exact same thing. So if we'll remember, our lower fence was equal to our first quartile, our Q1, minus this 1.5 times the IQR. So 1.5 times this IQR. So our lower fence is going to be equal to this lower quartile here, which is 2.5, minus 1.5 times by our IQR, and our IQR is just 3 down here. So it's going to be equal to 2.5 minus um, what would be 4.5, and this would be negative 2. So that means any number below negative 2 is going to be classed as an outlier. And that makes sense to us logically because if we're playing bowling, it's not possible to get negative 2 strikes. So these are all the numbers we need. First we work out our median, then we work out our upper quartile, our lower quartile, we work out our IQR, and then we calculate our fences. So I'll write these numbers just over here as a summary. So I've got our lower fence, and this is equal to negative 2. We've got our Q1, which is our lower quartile, is equal to 2.5. Our median is equal to 4. Our Q3 is equal to 5.5. And our upper fence is equal to 10. Cool. So I'm going to get rid of this here and make us some room to draw up this box plot. Right, so this is all that this is all the data we need. And now we can draw a box plot. So with a box plot, we don't usually have an x and y axis. We'll usually only have this one single axis. So we usually have it here. And on this axis we put a scale. So because we're going with strikes in a game of bowling, we know the maximum is 12 and the minimum is obviously 0. So you can get you can bowl no strikes in a game or you could bowl anywhere up to 12 strikes. So for this, the purposes of this scale, I'll make the top of our scale 14. So we've got a bit of a leeway on the end of our scale. Then what we do is we take our data and every time we have a... Alright, so we have our median. So our median is 4. And we'll come down here and we'll plot our median. So our median is down here, it's 4. And we go up to where our median is and we draw a line here. So we're, we're, we're drawing now what is called the box. These three figures here, our Q1, our median, and our Q3, will give us the box. So if we go down to our Q1, our Q1 is at 2.5. So we'll say 2.5 is roughly here. So we go down and at 2.5, that's our 2.5. So we put a line there. So this was our third quart uh, first quartile. This 4 was our median. 
and next we need to draw our upper quartile. So our upper quartile is at 5.5, .5, so we go to this side and we say our upper quartile will roughly be, I guess, somewhere around here. So this is going to be our upper quartile. So that's 5.5, .5, and that's our third quartile. So these make what we call the box. So this is our box part of our box plot. So we've got that. So these lines, our out, outermost lines mark our interquartile range. So our Q3 minus our Q1, this distance here, was our interquartile range. And next, we need to draw on our upper and lower fences. So we have these whiskers, and these mark our upper and lower fences. So our lower fence kind of doesn't make too much sense it'll come down here and it'll go all the way off our scale and it'll go down to negative 2. So this will be our lower fence. So this is our lower fence. And our upper fence will be all the way up here at around about 10. So this will be 10 and this will be our upper fence. So we draw a line there and we draw a whisker all the way out to our upper fence. So that's how we draw a box plot. We need our upper quartile, our lower quartile, our median, our lower fence, and our upper fence, and this will basically tell us all, all the stuff we need to know about our data. So we know its median, where its interquartile range is, and where its upper and lower fences are. So with our box plot, what we also do is we need to test for outliers. So our upper fence basically tells us where data stops being outliers. So any data above 10 will be an outlier. So if we look at this observation here, 12, so this is Homer's perfect game. Not many people bowl a perfect game, so it actually is an outlier. It doesn't happen rarely, it's very infrequent, and it's not consistent with our data. So what we do is we take this upper, this outlying value here because Homer's perfect game so Homer's perfect game, this 12, is greater than our upper fence of 10, we can say that Homer's perfect game is an outlier. So what we do is we take Homer's perfect game and we plot it. So we'll plot it outside of our data. So this dot here will represent Homer's perfect game. So that is how we draw up our box plot. And it tells, them some, it tells us some pretty interesting stuff. So if we remember from our IQR video, 50% of data is between our Q3 and our Q1. So 50% of our data is going to be in this box here. And that's our middle 50% of data. So this middle box has our middle 50% of data. And we know that 25% of our data is between our median and our third quartile. So this yellow box between our median and our upper quartile would have 25% of data. And if we were to do the exact same thing down here, this red box would have also 25% of data. So we can infer some interesting stuff from box plots, and that's how we draw them. So make sure you get down your median, your interquartile range, your upper quartile, lower quartile, upper fence, and lower fence, because that's all you really know need to know for drawing a box plot. So thanks for joining me for that video, guys. I hope it helps you. Um, cheers, and I'll see you next time.